Number one, not trying anything new. If you are painting the same model over and over again in the exact same way, you cannot really expect to improve. And this point especially applies to wargamers, because when you are painting an army, you are mostly looking for consistency. But is it really necessary to have all the models in your army painted in the exactly same way? Not really. And of course, if you got blue space marines, you won't suddenly paint yellow space marines. That doesn't make any sense. But you can still pay more attention to characters. And with those characters, you can try some of those more challenging techniques, like non-metallic metal or OSL. And in general, if you are painting everything in the same way, like doing base, shade and highlight approach, that's fine, but you should also try to paint actual volume on your minis. That way you'll end up with much more credible result. Number two, using too many paints. Someone would say that buying paints is a hobby of its own. And I have to agree. Even if you own 200 plus paints just like I do, you will most likely use just like 30 or 50 of them. And that's absolutely fine. There is no reason to overwhelm yourself with too many choices. Usually you'll pick like two or three main colors and then pick a few muted colors for the rest. What is more important than variety in color though is variety in value. In one of my other videos, I painted this miniature with only black and white. As you can see, even if there is no hue, you are able to tell what is going on here. You probably see which parts are expensive to light and which parts are not. There is also difference in material. So while contrast on this rock is not so prominent, contrast on the metallic parts is higher. This means that it is a value that makes something readable, not colors. Therefore focusing on how light or dark is your color is way more important than what exact hue do you use. Number three not using enough colors. When I started painting my Warhammer, I basically used just black and white to highlight my Black Templar army. And that's fine, you don't need four different types of gray, though it is good for consistency. But instead of using just gray for edge highlights, you can also go for bluish edge highlights, or even green edge highlights. So both of these look like dark or even black armor, but the final result is different. This is because we used colors to highlight it, instead of just adding white. And using black Black and white to make something lighter or darker is perfectly fine, but if you use it too much and you don't use any colors, then you will end up with a result that is very desaturated and muted. So let's say for example that you are highlighting red. Adding white will desaturate it and you'll end up with pink. Using yellow or ice yellow is way better for this reason, because you get nicely saturated result that is lighter as well. This is just one example, but this also applies to other colors when you want to make them lighter or darker. Also, there are universal highlight colors like sunny skin tone or ice yellow for warm highlights, or sky blue for cold ones. But if you are trying to not buy too many paints, you can do pretty much everything with Chimera colors. You get 13 paints and with those you can mix almost any color you want, because the pigment in them is very pure. By adding them into your standard paint, you get much more vibrant and saturated result. Number 4. Painting the wrong minis. So not only do you need variety in what you paint, but you also need the right models. It's not only about the material that the minis are from, though metal minis are dog sh but it's also about how many details do the miniatures have. The extreme example is beginners using plastic toy soldiers to practice. This is really not a good idea, because toy soldiers for the most part have terrible details. But even with high quality miniatures, you can have an issue of not having enough details or features to paint. This Mandalorian bust and this Quicksilver miniature are prime examples of this. I don't think that the result is necessarily bad, but there is not a whole lot going on these minis. All you can do is paint a gradient, maybe work with OSL and then add some texture. But it's hard to imagine doing anything else with a guy running in one colored bodysuit. So having sharp features and details is very important for your miniature painting experience and you'll have a hard time painting toy soldiers. And while having sharp edges and details is important, it's not like there are no diminishing returns. Some of the newer Games Workshop models have just this issue, because they have simply too many details and features. And paying attention to every single bracelet and trinket is tiring. So it's the best to choose models that have sharp edges with nice features, but not too many. A great example is this Valkyrie that is from today's sponsor, 
Shield Wolf miniatures. And we have actually featured Shield Wolf miniatures on this channel already when I was painting this trench ogre. As you can see, both have the right amount of sharp details and features. These Valkyries are part of their new Kickstarter campaign called War is Coming Reinforcements. These are awesome 28mm scale minis for wargaming and feature models like sexy desert ladies. Oh, and a cat. Goblins. Orcs. Holy Armored Ladies, Valkyries, Ogres and more. If you are a wargamer and looking for some variety in your army, definitely check it out. Thank you Shield Wolf Miniatures for sponsoring this video. Number 5. Using one technique for everything. This goes hand in hand with only using base, shade and highlight approach, but I also see that some people use only contrast paints or only dry brush for everything. This can be fast, but as a painter, you won't really get anywhere. There are people like Juan Hidalgo, who paints mostly with contrast paints and highlights on top of that, and the result is great. But even he uses more than just a contrast paint, and it's more of a stylistic choice anyway. Base coating your minis, slapping some null oil on them and expecting miracles is like throwing bricks into a cement and expecting a comfy house. Don't just mindlessly pour a wash over everything or dry brush everything when there are techniques like glazing for controlled shading and volumetric highlights or edge highlighting which you can use instead of dry brushing. And when I say this I always feel like I have to clarify. Washes and dry brushing are still valid techniques but using them for the entire miniature all the time doesn't really make sense especially when there are better options number six using too much or too little water this has been covered in my last video but basically you have to know when to thin down your paint and when not your initial layers should be more opaque so you don't have to thin your paint a whole lot but you have to spread it. There is this obsession of using too thin coats on everything and perhaps it's better than drowning your mini in paint, but if you spread your paint, you can use it straight out of pot. On the other hand, when you are refining your miniature, you can use way more water to fix any imperfections with glazes. But as I already said, you can check my video where I talk about correct paint dilution further. 7. Painting without a hobby lamp. The first few years of my hobby I really didn't improve a lot. Why? Well, I didn't see anything. Since miniature painting is a hobby that you mostly do on your own, unless you get a teacher or you watch videos like these, you don't really know when you are doing something wrong. And I just didn't know that I need a hobby lamp. But when I got it, oh boy! That was a game changer. If you don't already have one, this is a non-negotiable. So do your own research and buy one. Or there is a recommendation in the video description. Number eight, batch painting. There is nothing more soul draining in this hobby than batch painting. And I get it, okay? If you are preparing an army for an upcoming tournament, there is nothing else that you can do. But batch painting is too boring to do on a regular basis. If your hobby becomes a chore and you have no fun doing it, then why bother? If you are painting an army and you still want to be faster, I would at the most paint like 5 minis at the same time. Perhaps even 3 if they are more complex. But of course, nothing compares to taking a miniature and painting it from start to finish. That way, you can really take your time and enjoy the process. But if you absolutely have to batch paint for efficiency, once you finish a part of your army, reward yourself by painting only one character and nothing else. Number 9. Not learning enough. This is also the reason why I didn't use hobby lamp when I started. If you are just painting and not learning from anyone, you don't really see what you are doing right or wrong. By following a tutorial, you'll immediately realize what the mistakes might be. Furthermore, if you see some really cool effect on a photo, it's really hard to figure out how could someone achieve it, unless you got plenty of experience. But by watching someone break it down into simple small steps, you can really get a grasp on it. Also, don't get stuck just on the basics. It's not a bad idea to watch official Warhammer tutorials, but it's a really bad idea to watch only official Warhammer tutorials. If you watch beginner level stuff, you get beginner level result. 
simple as that. So do follow those great painters that you aspire to paint like and do watch their content. After all, it's the most effective way to learn miniature painting, together with practice. Speaking of which, number 10, not practicing. I know of people who gather too much information and watch too many tutorials before they even start painting. And once more, I have to say that both are necessary. If you don't practice enough, all the information is useless. But then you have to practice deliberately. This is super important because just the process of painting miniature miniatures is not enough. You could paint several armies and see little to no progress. You have to actively try to improve and also do give yourself enough time to finish the mini. There are plenty of people who just wanna see their mini painted and fair enough, if you are more of a gamer anyway, uh, that's just fine. But if you are trying to improve, don't be afraid to invest 20, 30, or even 40 hours into a single miniature. This hobby is predicated on patience, so the more you have, the better result you get. Now, as I already mentioned, you need both deliberate practice and the knowledge. So if you are starting out and you are still not sure about some things, I have made a video where I cover everything you need to start painting minis. It's a great resource even if you need to refresh some techniques, so definitely check it out. And see you there!